Hello everyone, it is Pixel Weekly, back with another video. And uh, this one will be uh, a kind of requested video about the finished sleeper build. It is all done. Uh, there might be minor updates I make in the future, like more RAM or uh, an SSD or something, but right now it is done uh, for all, you know, all my purposes right now it's completely done. Uh, I'm going to separate this video into two parts, a little tour of everything, which I've already done, but this one's slightly updated, and I mean slightly. Um, and then the narrated portion where I actually get into my computer and show you off all the parts and some benchmarks and stuff. So let's start with the desktop itself. Uh, the only thing that's really changed is I've gotten a new mouse, and it's on a Brandon mouse pad, which I don't even know what this brand is. My dad just gave it to me because I needed a mouse pad and I didn't want to spend any money. <laughs> I, I've had this mouse pad for probably since 2013 or 2014, so I, I have no clue. I'm part, blocking out part of the brand name just so you guys don't think I, I'm endorsing this crap, but uh, <laughs> apparently it has I and T in the name. Um, and basically, yeah, I mean, the only really thing that's a change is my mouse and my keyboard. The keyboard's actually very old. Uh, if you've seen my. 16 year old uh, keyboard cleaning video. Uh, this is the same one. It's from an old IBM Net Vista. Uh, it's from around 01, so I guess it's more like 17 years old now. It's still working perfectly. There's nothing, you know, it's still, still sounds like a membrane keyboard. I just like it because of how big it is, uh, the slight, you know, rest it has here, and just because of nostalgia reasons. Uh, up to the monitor, it's an HP W185E, nothing special, it came with an 09 uh, HP Pavilion. A very, very cheap computer, and hopefully not too cheap motherboard. Uh, it's basically, like, I'm, I'm assuming it's not anywhere near gaming. If we go over to the speakers, we have my, I forget the name again, I'll put it up on the screen now. If you watch my other tour video, you'll you'll see them, they're $20. I actually don't plan on replacing these anytime soon, they have been amazing. Like, amazing. Like, better than anything I could buy for, you know, three times the amount of money. And they are $20. They are incredible. I highly suggest them if you're on a tight budget. And they also match my setup of black and white. Uh, let's move over to Mr. Scoobs over here and the gang. Uh, we have my still, my main mic. Uh, it's a blue ice, blue snowball ice. I think it provides amazing sound quality for the price. I don't plan on replacing it anytime soon again. Uh, it's been very reliable, knock on wood. Uh, I really love it. And I might also soon move everything here because Having this corner is a bit awkward, you know, you get a lot of leg room and stuff, but that's, you know, you also have this, which is my one complaint of this desk. It is a pretty cheap desk, I bought it with my own money, and I don't have a job, so. <laughs> um, let's move over to the controller. Uh, it's just an Xbox One controller. Uh, it's fr I thought when I first bought it, it was, it's officially licensed, so I mean, it's, it's got to be an okay controller, I guess. But it has really surprised me with this quality. I think it was, I got it for 30. So half, well, it is wired. So maybe like, you know, 20 to 10 to $20 cheaper than a, an actual Xbox branded one. Um, it feels exactly like an Xbox branded one. There's nothing wrong with it. Just with the added bonus that you can change this faceplate off. I like the color personally. And also it has a few uh, buttons that you can program. Uh, I have not found any use in programming those I kind of ignore them uh, just the games I play don't really require them so very good purchase there too and then Scoobs over here it's just a little pop figure I want to start collecting these guys I've had Scoobs since probably ooh I think probably winter of last year so maybe a year now and then finally let's go down below to Andromeda which is the sleeper PC builds name oh and if I were to go into my desktop you would see that the background is the Andromeda Galaxy. So let's also take just a look at the actual outside of it. That's the Windows key over there so I can't let you see that. Uh, I actually don't know if that one's... yeah I guess. It's for Vista though. I don't know if you guys would want that even. <laughs> 
I, I've, I have 10 on here. Uh, I actually just got a Windows 7 key for my other HP, which is actually that monitor belongs to. It is a obviously a Ryzen build, as you can see here, if you haven't been following my uh, sleeper budget PC builds. Uh, it is a Ryzen build. Uh, it is VR ready, just barely with the Ryzen 3 1300X. It can probably do it, maybe at 30 FPS. I haven't tried. I'm not going to buy a VR headset because I don't have that kind of money. Uh, but uh, So I'll get into the computer more later. Uh, right now I'd just like to go over the case. And the case is an HP, older HP pavilion from 08, uh, 08 or 07, late 07 maybe. It had a Pentium, I think it was a Pentium dual core at 1.6 gigahertz. I don't remember the exact model. I apologize. It had 2 gigs of DDR. I think it was 3, which is pretty impressive. Maybe it was 2. Um, no, I think it was 2. It was DDR2. I actually don't remember, but it was 2 gigs, not really what I want, uh, but things I did want were the uh, DVD drive and then all these little ports. I only use the SD card port right here. Uh, it has full size SD, which is always a plus. Never want micro SD just in case I have ever have to use an SD card for video. Uh, one thing I don't necessarily want, but it's okay because it's not plugged in, I just love the look of this horrible computer, is this HP Pocket Media Bay drive, which I've heard these were big old flops, like they didn't do well at all. Everything was very, very standard, almost like it was a case that I bought from Newegg or something, or, or PC Part Picker, just like a standard case from who just throw out a maker. Uh, it was very, very easy to work with. Uh, the one thing that is kind of weird with it is that, I mean, this is pretty normal for these kinds of computers, is that the uh, PSU is up top there. Let's actually take a look at my horrible cable management. I'll get into that later, too. Um, it's up here, so that's really the only unusual thing. So let's go over here <laughs> to the mess. This is horrible. I need to get some kind of zip ties or something and put them on the back of my desk. Uh... But, you know, if there's one silver lining, it's that this is very easy to plug stuff in and unplug things. It just looks awful. So let's take our eyes off that. <laughs> With that out of the way, let's go ahead and go inside of the computer. Okay, in this part of the video, I'm going to be doing things a bit different than I normally do in my videos. I don't have a script. I'm just going to, I kind of wrote down some things I want to go over. So let's get started. Uh, as you can see here, here's the processor and the actual, the, actually the stock cooler you can see is the Ray Stealth that actually comes with the Ryzen 3 1300X, which is very nice. You don't have to pay extra for uh, a stock cooler, and that's very nice, uh, especially in this budget, because I'll tell you later how much this PC is now, but when I built it, it was $495 in all, not including some other little purchases I had to make, just the actual PC itself. And of course, not including the things I didn't have to buy, like the case and the two hard drives and that kind of stuff. I already had those laying around. Um, so the processor, it's amazing. It's been amazing for me. Uh, Ryzen themselves kind of compares it to a very high-end i3. I think it's more like a mid-range i5 uh, with because it's a four. It's a true four-core, four-thread, uh, which a lot of i3s, at least um, stock like things that you don't build with, a lot of smaller i3s maybe dual core even um its base clock is 3.5 gigahertz which is already amazing uh and then it's overclockable to 3.7 if you have the right motherboard a b350 which i do i'll get into that later it's only 65 watt tdp which is also amazing uh you don't need a huge you know uh PSU to power this entire thing and it's only $130 it's only $20 more than the lowest of the low Ryzen 3 1200 I'm sure there's not a huge difference for that price, but I just thought, eh, why might as well splurge twenty dollars? And again, it's very nice that it comes with that stock cooler. It's very smooth. It's very efficient in my in my testing. Uh, before I put in the GTX 1060, it actually had amazing temps, but now with the GTX 1060, the entire computer does heat up. Uh, let's move on to the RAM. Uh, as you can see here, it's it's nice and glossy red. Uh, <laughs> it's eight gigabytes of DDR4 HyperX Fury. Uh, at first I had some, I think it was, ooh, I think it was, it was definitely something from G-Skill, but I don't really remember the exact model. It was, it was 8 gig, and it was similar uh, clock speed of 2133 megahertz. I think it was slightly higher, maybe 2400. Uh, but that one didn't work, and I thought it was the RAM, but it was actually the PSU. Uh, so I sent that back and then got this. 
uh, and I got it for around fifty to sixty dollars at the time. And if you look at the prices now, RAM is horrible. It, it's now one hundred and twenty-two dollars for the same eight gig stick of RAM. Uh, it. I'm so glad I bought it when I did. I, I already thought RAM was expensive at that time, but it has literally doubled since I bought it. I think in around Ju July, August area is when I bought it. It's just incredible. And uh, when I tell you the price of the the new price of the entire build, it's going to be pretty obvious that I'm glad I built it when I did. But uh, let's move on to the motherboard. It is an Astrock AB350M. It's the cheapest B350 motherboard. I could find it's Astrock. It's not like it's a horrible brand name. I haven't had any problems with it. It's actually been very reliable. Knock on wood again. Uh, <laughs> and like I've even kind of accidentally given it a beating a few times with installing the fan. I was uh, the not the uh, the uh, stock cooler for the PSU. Uh, not the PSU. Uh, the CPU. And uh, I kind of gave it a beating with how the screws were. For some reason, I had trouble with that, but it still works fine. Uh, and there's nothing really special about it, and it's around sixty dollars right now. It's it's honestly, I think it's the one of the cheapest, if not the cheapest, things on this computer, and it's the motherboard itself. <laughs> so there's really nothing else about it that's too special. Uh, well, I was wrong because this is the cheapest thing. It's the PSU, which I'm in love with this PSU, uh, mostly because it replaced my old broken PSU, and I now, basically, the PSU and the graphics card I buy from this company. It's EVGA, 600, bronze, 600B. Uh, I didn't really need 600 watts, but I was just like, eh, you know, it's in my price range. It's about the same as the old Corsair. Uh, the Corsair, it was just dead on arrival. I don't, I just must have gotten unlucky. I thought, I mean, I, I still buy from Corsair. I don't know if you guys saw them on my mouse, it's Corsair. But I don't buy their internal parts anymore. I really love EVGA. I actually have a poster up in my room because it came with my graphics card. I just put it up. It's cheap and reliable. Around 40 bucks, and you get 600 watts. Uh, it is non-modular. So keep that in mind. Uh, that's also why my cable management inside my PC really sucks. And now let's move on to the, the big one, the GTX 1063 gigabyte. This thing is insane. It just keeps going up. Back when I, back before Christmas, it was around 200. After Christmas, around the time I started wanting to buy it, it went up to 220. And then Amazon put it up at 250 the day I wanted to buy it. So I had to buy it from Newegg, which I'm glad I did because I got free day shipping. Uh, sing one day shipping because they're based in Indianapolis like I am. Uh, and then today when I checked, it is now 260 on every single website I check. So if you're wanting this thing, buy it while it's below $300 if I were you. Uh, RAM and graphics card prices, I don't know. I don't know if it's crypto mining. But, you know, I bought it like a week and a half ago. It was at 220 now it's at 260 So it's base clock. Uh, here are the specs, quick specs. It's base clock. Uh, it's the cheaper of the two 3 gigabyte models. I don't. There's barely any difference between them I saw. There's like a slight difference, but it wasn't worth the extra, like, what, 20 to $30. Uh, now I can't even find the more expensive the two, of the two. All I find is the one that's 260. The base clock is 1607 megahertz. Uh, its boost clock is 1835. I don't know much about graphics card specs, so I'm just kind of spitting out specs here. Uh, it has 1152 CUDA cores. Again, I don't know what that means too much. <laughs> it has three gigabytes of GDDR5 RAM. At least know what that means. And the RAM clock is 8008 megahertz. Uh, it's a very nice card. It basically enables all of my gaming needs. It's it's definitely the powerhouse of it. It pairs pretty nicely with my uh, Ryzen 3 3300X. Uh, I've actually been playing basically one of the most power hungry games that isn't VR, uh, and that's BMT Drive. At least with some of the stuff you can do on there, it's pretty power hungry. Um, and it does it fine. You know, I get a solid 60 FPS. I think there's a FPS limiter already. I think I could get more if I tried. But I'm already getting a solid 60 FPS even with multiple vehicles in the game. Uh, no matter what, it stays pretty much at 60. So it's a very nice card, even the 3 gig model. Uh, really, I wouldn't even go for the 6 gig model if you're on a budget. Really, that's more of just kind of a gimmick, just to try to get you to buy something more expensive. And it's like almost $100 more expensive too. So let's go ahead and get started with some like you know miscellaneous stuff in my computer, that being hard drives and case fans. Let's start with a more boring thing, case fans. I have one case fan and it's the exhaust fan, but my other fans that are like, you know, on the graphics card, on the PSU, on the CPU, are, they're placed pretty strategically, <laughs> so they do pretty efficiently blow air out. The one thing that kind of messes up everything is that the PSU fan is pointed down at the graphics card, and then the graphics card fan is pointed up at the PSU, so they're kind of, you know, canceling each other out. Um, 
But, I mean, that's really the only thing. They're still blowing air out, which is good. And the exhaust fan is definitely bringing hot air out. So, really, that's it with the fans. Um, you know, I didn't have to pay anything for any of them. Uh, the case fan I got in it is not from this case. It's actually from the 09 computer's case. So, that's about it with the case fans. And then, finally, the hard drives. I have two 7200 RPM hard drives. I'm lucky enough to have two 7200 RPMs. I didn't have to pay for them because, um, again, they're from the 07, 08, and 09 computer. Uh, the 08, 07 computer, that is actually what the case is, is of that computer. It's an old pavilion. They're both old pavilions. I guess my family really loved HP. One is a 500 gig. That's off the newer one. And one is a 320 gig. That's off this one. Uh, the 320 gig has Vista on it still. I haven't taken that off yet. Uh, but, you know, I'm... It's just a secondary drive, uh, and that's because it has a lot of my family's like memories, a lot of child pictures of me uh, that we put on that computer, uh, and then you know just like a lot of you know my mom when she was younger, uh, just a lot of things. So I need to find a very safe place to put that before I can take that hard drive out. I'd like to maybe put it in like uh, one of those backup things, but I don't have the money to get one of those. Uh, if you don't know what that is, those are like you put four terabyte hard drives in them, and then they back it up to all like they, you know, they back it up to all four. So even if one goes out, you still have it on, you know, the the information backed up, you know, three times over or something. I think that's how they work. Um, but I, I I really need to find a safe place to put them. These are both very old hard drives, you know, 10 and 11 years old. I'm sure they still got some life left in them. Again, knock on wood, I think that's like the fifth time I've done that in this video. What's very good is actually that the new hard drive had 7 on it. Ryzen doesn't support Windows 7, but it that means it also has the Windows key, which is on the new computer side. Key is on there, so I was able to get 10 for free. Now let's get to let's get to the price. Uh, I I might have missed something cuz this price almost seems too conservative. But uh, the old price was $495, perfectly fine, under $500 for, you know, VR, uh, ready at least. And then now the build is up to $612. Uh, it's more than $100 difference, and that's just, it's all, basically all the graphics card and RAM. Nothing else has raised its price, just with the graphics card and RAM. Mo mostly the RAM, actually. It's just, it's raised its price so much, it's just stupid. Um... I just can't even believe it. So let's get into some benchmarks and I'll talk to you soon.